Hey there guys, welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Today we're going to talk about books you should be reading in 2023 if you're looking to go into data engineering. And we're actually going to do something here where we break this down into different levels. So it's not just going to be a bunch of books that I'm going to list out that you should read, but we're going to try to make this clear if you're a beginner start here. If you're kind of more mid-level, been doing some DE work, start here. And if you're more experienced, possibly, you know, start in this other section. So you can put up that classic meme. Now, if you're like me, you enjoy reading books. I mean, honestly, I prefer listening to them. I have been listening to The Barbarians at the Gates for <laughs> like two months. It's a very long book, but it's great if you're more into like finance and things of that nature. But you're here for data books. So let's start with the fundamentals. That is to say the fundamentals of data engineering. And if you don't know which book that is, it's by Joe Reese. So this book here, especially if you're not even sure if data engineering is for you, this is a great beginner level book because it will just lay out everything very broadly. If you recall in my last video where I talked about courses you should take and how you should learn topics, one of the things I discussed is learning very broadly first before diving deep, because then you kind of understand the high level, you know, 10,000 foot view of what the world looks like. And that's what this book does really well. On top of that, what this data engineering book does is it helps kind of lay foundations where there haven't been a ton. Data engineering to some degree is an old profession and to other degrees is new. And because of that, there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily crystallized. And Joe Reese and Matt went out and kind of helped crystallize a lot of these concepts, everything from data pipelines to data storage, to where data comes from in terms of data sources, as well as just the data engineering life cycle, sorry, data life cycle and all of that. So they've done a good job and they've also interviewed tons of people like Bill Inman and some of the, the other classics and some of the other forefathers of the space. And that's really great because you get not just, again, their opinions or the author's opinions, but you really are getting this very broad perspective of what data engineering is. And so this is great, again, if you're just looking to break into the field, because you might not even know, is this the work you want to do? And I've done videos about, you know, should you become a data engineer? But I think this does a far better job. So this is a classic book, and I'm really glad that Joe signed it. So thank you, Joe. Another classic book that really will help you understand the basics of data engineering, or at least in terms of the data pipeline, is the data pipeline pocket reference. It is kind of what it says. It's not a hugely in-depth uh, explanation of data engineering, but it really is focused on data pipelines. It's a little bit older because it focuses more on things like Redshift, but first of all, Redshift is still probably the most common cloud data warehouse that exists. So I can say it's older, but very commonly used, especially in the enterprise. But it helps you kind of understand like data pipelines, what are they, how you can kind of build some baseline ones, how you can go from like building Python kind of DAGs that are very newly developed to things like Airflow. And so I think that's really important because it's just a good guide in terms of like helping you grasp what your job is as a data engineer, especially on the data pipeline side. Now, of course, because this only covers data pipelines, it's part of this picture of data engineering. On the other side, you will want to understand data warehousing. And I'm going to keep recommending, you know, Kimball's books. You can kind of pick almost any of them. Again, there's, I'm going to link the free book below because you can at least get a good understanding of what his style of data warehouse is. You can also look into Bill Inman's um, books as well, but it just gives you a good understanding of kind of why we're using what we're using in terms of like tables. And again, I'll, I'll always reference it because it's, it's just classic and free. And of course there's other things you can look up like Python and, you know, Airflow and, and there are books on those specifically, but I think it's more important as a beginner, one, you should hopefully already be working on Python and Airflow and things like that. And there's tons of Udemy courses that you can look up for that or Coursera courses, but book wise that like cover large concepts. And I think that's kind of where you're at as a beginner. These are kind of the books I, I dig into. So you're really just trying to understand the big picture, but without going too deep because you're a beginner. And, and this is kind of why I said reference that meme earlier, because you're really at the beginning, you're kind of going high level with some low level stuff of, of learning how to code and things like that. But from a book standpoint, I think it's more high level and then mid-level you kind of focus more on things like learning spark and kafka and these other technologies and kind of reading books on them and then you go again high level you start going into um, other books which we're going to dig to which we're about to dig into here in a second so first let's kind of dig into some mid-level books that you can read so the first book i'd recommend one thing you probably realize is I there was no reference to spark before is uh, learning spark specifically for lightning fast data analytics 
I just like kind of understanding how you can use it, not just for data engineering, but also for analytics. And there's a second edition, which is great because it actually covers Spark 3. So you're not going to be limited. It'll help you understand kind of the general components in Spark. So things like answering the question, what is an RDD? What is Spark architecture? Understanding things like the data set API, as well as more importantly, things like optimizing Spark, because that's where you're going to spend a ton of time, especially as a data engineer, is trying to improve Spark queries and Spark jobs, whether it's written you know, in Python, Scala, or Spark SQL. Um, it all kind of ends up going back to eventually having to fine tune a lot of that. I, I imagine in the future, like I know this is weird, but I, I imagine in the future, like we'll have co-pilots that like GitHub co-pilot that will just fix it for you and optimize your queries. And honestly, I think that's where we should go. You know, you should just be able to write a query and you should kind of get what you want to do and then improve the performance. So I'm hoping that eventually happens, but that all starts with you understanding how to optimize your queries and then maybe you someday build that copilot. You'll also learn things like building uh, reliable data lakes with Spark. So I think that's very important, especially as a data engineer. And so there's just a lot of concepts here that if you're trying to get a little, again, a little more skill, but you're beyond just getting started with like Python and Airflow and just understanding what components exist in data engineering, this is a great place to start. All right, so I know I said I was going to stick with mostly not lower level books, but more technical books. There's two books I would recommend mid-level people read, and then you reread them maybe three years later, because this first read will really just be about laying foundations that you'll eventually connect with more and more as you go through your career. And those two books are The Pragmatic Programmer and Mythical Man Month. I'm kind of putting them together, but they're both similar in the sense that they teach good practices of programming more than like focusing on actual programming, right? You're not going to learn anything purely technical here. There's going to be some principles that they cover like dry or how to, you know, manage a programming project, but they're really more focused on software engineering in terms of like project management, as well as like and the engineering side of things, not as much on the actual nuanced technical little tidbits of a specific language. So these are timeless, like the Mythical Man Month, I think it's, oh, actually, let me look this up before I tell you when it was written, but it was written in the IBM days. Hold on while I Google this. So yeah, it was written in 1975. And honestly, you, you read a lot of the uh, analogies and stories that they give you, and it's it's way before most of us. It's talking about languages and companies that existed prior to probably many of us being born, or maybe not existed, but were the like place to work in terms of like technical top tier. Everything written here is like solid in terms of like project management um, and just writing code. And it's really, I think the biggest thing you, you realize is like nothing has changed <laughs> over these like, what would that be? 50 years, nothing has changed in, in software development in terms of the problems that we face. Um, I love the example that they give where they talk about cathedrals and how cathedrals used to be built. And in some cases, people had like a consistent engineering, like design set of specs or like the person that built it or just decided to build it was like, here are the specs for how you build it and how to design it. I mean, although it took hundreds of years to build it or 50 years to build it, it looked like the same engineer built it throughout or the same architects, whereas other buildings would look like, you know, four to 10 different people built it because well, you did have four or 10 different people who built it and there wasn't a set of specs that said, hey, this is our design philosophy. And it's the same thing in code. Like if you ever come into some project, sometimes you're just like, wow, at least 10 people wrote this code. And you know that because you can literally see 10 different uh, coding styles within one project. And that's, it's very frustrating. You run into issues where, you know, maintenance and things like that are borderline impossible. And that's why this is an important book because you're going to learn a lot in terms of how to have better practices and why you have those practices. And honestly, at your mid-level sophomoric stage, you might not completely connect with it, but if you read it again in two to three years, you'll definitely start being like, oh yeah, that's, I did something dumb four years ago, three years ago. That's why it's, I, you know, I connect with it. There it is. That's why. So that's why I say read it early and then read it again later. And then finally, um, I'd say take a look at the Kafka definitive guide as well. There's a lot of things changing in the world, I think, of technology. And Kafka is kind of going to this world where it's likely going to be a managed service more than something that you spin up. But I think it's still important to understand kind of where we start. So one, Kafka is still heavily relied upon. But also, even if we get into a world where we don't rely on it or we are relying on it in a very different format, I think it's still important to kind of understand the underlying basis of how things are set up. Not just in terms of the basics of Kafka, like 
producers, consumers, and things like that, but how to manage it, how to monitor it, how to build reliable pipelines, that is all in this book. And it's, again, it's pretty comprehensive. It's There's a second edition, so you don't have to worry about being behind, which is always great. Um, I've definitely sometimes accidentally <laughs> read an old book, so make sure you get the new one. Otherwise, you're gonna be confused. But yeah, it's gonna cover a lot, and I think it's solid in terms of learning. Honestly, there's a ton of other technology books you can read. O'Reilly does tend to put out solid books. You you rarely can go wrong with what they put out. And I hate that I only recommend mostly their books, but they do a good job. All right, now let's say you're a senior engineer or you're just more senior, you're more experienced. You need that next level book, like the Staff Engineering Leadership Beyond the Management Track book where you learn about being a staff engineer. You can get a paperback version of this book, but you can also just re listen to it on audio like me. Again, I just listen to all of this either during my runs or lifts. What's great about this book is it talks about, hey, what does it mean to operate at a staff level of engineering? Because it is kind of abstract, right? Like I've, I've kind of talked about it. I've uh, listed articles in here. Let's kind of scroll through this article where we, we talk about it. And you'll notice that this article is, again, Will Larson, the same person that's written this book. And that's because, again, I think he has solid principles of like, what does it mean to be a staff engineer? Like, how do you lead without necessarily being a straightforward leader, right? You're not necessarily management, but you kind of have to act like it. What kind of work should you be looking for? It also has like great stories and you can find some of these again online for, for free, but has some great stories in terms of like staff engineers that, that he's interviewed. And so it's really just cram packed with a ton of information about being a staff engineer. And especially if you're a senior trying to make that jump, it could help alleviate some of that stress or show you how to do it. Next, the book I'd recommend, and honestly, you could maybe read this book earlier, but I feel like if you read it earlier, it might not click as well. And that's Designing Data Intensive Applications. It's a classic. Everyone will like always recommend it. If you Google like top 10 data engineering books, it will show up as like number one, followed by Joe's book. The first part of the book, first few chapters are probably great. They talk about partitioning. They talk about all these things that honestly would be good for you to learn. But later on, if you're not working on systems that are large and, and require all of these you know, intensive scaling properties, it might be hard to connect with. And it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't make that connection, it might just kind of poof away in a year because you don't use it. So this might be more of a mid-level book. Maybe I could just be being picky here. I'm like, mm, where does this really fit? I was trying to trying to figure that out. So feel free to put it where you want, mid-level, senior. But it, I think it's one of those books that's worth rereading at the very least when you're a senior. Another similar book to me is Software Architecture, The Hard Part. Basically talks about trade-offs in building things like distributed systems and, and building these large systems. They really go in depth in terms of like trade-offs in design. And again, that's just one of those things that like you can read early on, uh, maybe year one or year two, but it really won't make that connection unless one, you're working at a startup to where you need to be building everything from scratch yourself or two, you know, you're more senior and you're actually seeing these trade-offs and you're having to, having to make them yourself. So it can be valuable to read early, but I think there's, again, just this trade-off where it'll connect more when you're you're more experienced. So those are the books I would check out in 2023. Just put maybe one or two on your reading list. I wouldn't say try to go crazy. Um, really try to dissect these books. Really try to go in depth. Don't try to just speed read them because you think reading more books is more useful. I've, again, been reading barbarians at the gates forever because it really is fascinating understanding i think the biggest thing from that book is human psychology and incentives because it's all about like these bankers and and uh, ceos and how a company essentially almost got stolen out from under another ceo and how a company and whole deal kind of got honestly bamboozled to some degree because the bankers were greedy but that's you know if you're more into finance other than that guys i wish you a wonderful 2023 and i hope to see you in the next video Thank you and goodbye.